Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the Software Development Lifecycle, or SDLC. We're going to talk about all the steps that are defined in the SDLC and how teams utilize the SDLC to produce new software. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is the Software Development Lifecycle? The Software de Development Lifecycle is referred to as the SDLC. It defines the general steps and phases that are taken in a software development effort. A software development effort will move from one phase to the next phase and has general steps that are taken with, within each one of those phases. Now, some of those steps may overlap. For example, uh, software may be undergoing testing and they may find some bugs and it'll roll back to a previous state of development until that bug is fixed. And this may bounce back and forth between that particular step. And again, if some steps are not successful, the, the project may roll back to a previous step. But these are generally the steps that are defined for the SDLC. So what are the general steps of the SDLC? The SDLC is presented as the cycle below. It starts with the feasibility study, then moves on to a requirements analysis, followed by design, then coding, testing, the software is actually deployed in production, and then it goes into an operational phase. Following that, another release may be planned, and so the whole cycle will begin to repeat itself as new requirements are developed, uh, potentially a new feasibility study, and the entire cycle would start over again. So let's go through all the details of each step in the process. The first step in the process is a feasibility study. In this step, you would actually determine, can the project actually be completed? Can you do it with existing staff? Do you have the technology to do this? Can it be done on time and within budget? And is the project even technically feasible? Are there some high risk elements that you just can't mitigate the risk for? Also in this step, you'll do a buy versus build determination, whether you can go out and actually buy an existing piece of software or should you build it in-house. In addition, you may also determine can you build it in-house or maybe you'll hire a contracted staff or completely outsource the, the project uh, altogether. So in the feasibility study, it's not done for all um, uh, projects, mostly for highly complex projects. But in, in any case, most projects will look at some kind of determination up front to see if the project is technically feasible and if it's affordable. So that's the feasibility study and the first step. The next step in the process is requirements analysis. This is where the business analyst will begin to complete a requirement specification to start building a project. All of the business rules, security requirements, all the uh, use cases, sample screen designs, reports will be developed at this point. Um, really everything that necessary to begin building the software will be done at this point. Requirements are, are generally have to be approved or signed off, uh, particularly in larger projects. This is a formal process where somebody in management will have to sign off on these requirements before it's turned into code. Um, this is a critical step in the process. Most projects, software development projects that fail, uh, fail at this step. They, they do a poor job in the requirements analysis. And then when they start coding, um, the users begin to understand they're not getting what they ask for and the requirements begin to change and it kind of cascades into a really difficult situation. So requirements analysis is probably the most critical step in any software development project. You really have to understand what you're trying to build before you start writing code. The next step is the design phase. Software designers will map the requirements into several different types of designs. First will be a logical design where the large scale components of the, of the system are mapped out and then a physical design. These physical designs include things like database schemas, uh, software modules, signatures and, and those types of things. These designs will be re uh, reviewed by various different departments for approval, such as the software development department. Um, if there's an enterprise architecture uh, division, they'll want to look at that. And certainly now the biggest uh, 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 department to review these is the security department. So security is a huge concern at, at, at this point in time. So the design phase, all these artifacts will map, again map the requirements into uh, physical and logical designs, uh, and all this work has to be completed before then the coding uh, actually begins. 
The next step is coding. Finally, we get to write some code after all these other steps. Um, and most uh, beginner programmers want to jump to this step right away and skip all the other steps. But in a, in a large project, that's just not possible. So at this step, um, programmers will actually begin writing code. They'll begin writing code based on the design specifications that were completed. And they'll look to reuse code, perhaps from a previous project that, that they could reuse something to save some time. Unit testing will be built as, uh, as it should be with uh, most code so that testing can happen in parallel with the coding to ensure that code not only works when you produce it, but works along the way. Many projects will also begin to do demonstrations at this point to show prototypes and early pieces of the software to customer to make sure everything's functioning properly. So this is the coding phase. The next step is the testing phase. This is a critical step to make sure that everything is functioning properly, not only functionally, but also that the anticipated load is accounted for, that the number of concurrent users uh, that the system is projected to support or needs to support it will actually function. So this is called load testing. So there's a number of different layers of testing that will happen at this point. There's a unit test, uh, so that you can make sure that all the units actually fit together. An integration test, so if the system um, actually needs to move data between other systems, uh, that this is thoroughly tested. A load test to make sure it will perform properly under load. So there's been a number of high profile systems that have failed over, over recent years when the system rolled out and was put under load, uh, had really bad results. So load testing is a critical step to make sure not just that the software functions but software functions uh, while it's uh, being uh, used under the uh, projected load or a number of concurrent users that are going to use it and then user acceptance testing this is also a critical step to make sure that the users verify that the system does exactly what it's supposed to do so testing is a, a critical step and many times a system uh, uh, code is kicked back to the development team when bugs are found and this will cycle back and forth until uh, it's determined that a stable state has been reached with the software. So this is the testing phase. The next step is the deployment phase. This is where we're actually going into production with our software. Yay, finally we're getting some software out. So in this step, uh, development teams and operations teams will schedule some time uh, when the system uh, can be released. Many times this requires scheduling some kind of downtime or system outage to do uh, upgrades if this is a replacement of a system or a maintenance release. Uh, typically then downtime will be scheduled perhaps on some uh, non-peak hours in the late evenings or perhaps over a weekend or a holiday. Many times holiday weekends are perfect times uh, uh, for a lot of organizations to deploy software since uh, many users won't be on the system and uh, the, the usage is particularly light. So um, in addition to deploying the software, plans will have to be in place to do a rollback in case something goes wrong. Uh, when the software is put out something unanticipated, which you don't want to have happen, but it does happen occasionally, that you can roll the software back and you can put the previous version back and then fall back to a previous release. So that's a critical step. You don't want to be trying to figure that out uh, while, while the problem is actually being encountered. All of these steps need to be rehearsed uh, well ahead of time and all the users need to be informed of when this uh, action is going to take place. So nothing uh, makes users more angry than uh, having unscheduled downtime. So this is the deployment phase. The last step in the process is the operations phase. The software has actually gone into production and at this point the the uh, ticketing and help desk process will begin to, to take place. So it, as users find problems, um, they'll be assigned to help desk pers personnel who will enter tickets. Those will be escalated up through the development team and operations team uh, to make sure that any problems that are encountered are, are sorted out. Uh, software fixes are developed and uh, also the patch and maintenance cycle will begin. So patches are developed to uh, fix problems and those will be scheduled to be put into production. Also, uh, operating system patches and system software updates uh, need to be considered at this point. So uh, a, lo a lot of activity, even though the development is done, a lot of the development will continue to help fix bugs and also uh, maintenance releases for uh, new functionality and um, new requests as those come in. So this is the operation and maintenance phase. 
In summary, we've gone through all the steps of the software development lifecycle. Each step has its own uh, unique things that happen during the step, and as I mentioned before, some of these steps may overlap with each other. In addition, some companies add additional steps for quality assurance purposes that are unique to their operation. And again, some of these steps may change or they may move back and forth depending on what problems are encountered in the project. So this is a, a complex process. So developing software and shipping it uh, for a large team of people in a large operation is a complex task. Um, there are lots of layers of management and software development companies and software development projects to help manage this process. So that's really it for this lesson. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.